All right, welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. And today we have Total OS Today, Infinitely Galactic, and yours truly, Spatry. And Total OS Today is going to get us started. Hi, Spatry. Hi, IG. Welcome back after, I guess, you went away for a few weeks. I know you're bits, you know, busy with school and stuff, but welcome back. And uh, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. And yes, Battery, this is uh, number six, center number six. Yeah. A half yeah. dozen already. Boy, that's incredible. Boy, I tell you, you know, as the saying goes, you know, time flies as I'm suffering here. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you're going to be suffering before this episode's over. You do realize that. Yeah, don't you? yeah. The uh, the sinner <laughs> report, and IG can guess who's the sinner and who's the victim here. But well, what uh, have I signed up for? Uh, I tell you what. Feel free to leave us anytime you want to. No, no warning is necessary. Just say, just goodbye, and I'll, and I'll catch you later. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I'm out. Bye. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks. Yes. Welcome. Yay! We're funny. Yay! Young Skywalker, but you're not a Jedi yet. I will terminate Skywalker. Where is he? <laughs> You know, we really don't have to do the news. Me, you, and IG can just do sound effects. IG does a terrific commercial voice, as as you guys may have heard last month on the PCA team. But uh, uh, but getting to the news, this is our, our weekly uh, news and nonsense report. Uh, valid news items, maybe some nonsense thrown in. Of course, if it was up to Spatchy, it would be all nonsense. But uh, let's see. I have yeah. Some news, though. Say, say, say again? I have some news. You do? Well, uh, listen, this, this is IG's first time on the Center Report. IG, why don't you get us started, sir? There you go. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we have, a, uh, we have an interesting news story here that's been, uh, it's been flying around uh, for a couple of months about uh, Oracle wanting to sue Google for their, uh, for their Java implementation in, their, in, uh, in Google's Android. And um, basically, there's just an article that, uh, that was released uh, last, uh, last week, I think, uh, talking about that really the best that Oracle can hope for, even though they were wanting like a billion dollars in, uh, in damages for their uh, copyright patent infringement and all of that, uh, the best they can hope for is about 150000 uh, because of some uh, range check function codes that have been uh, apparently copyright, uh, the, you know, they've been infringed as far as copyright's concerned. So in other words, um, Oracle's not getting what they wanted and, uh, and Google gets away relatively scot-free. Most of it just boils down to um, they reckon that uh, the APIs used for uh, programming shouldn't be copyrighted. Therefore, they don't think that uh, that they don't think that Oracle has any uh, weight in the situation to be able to pull anything out of it. So uh, I don't really know which way to take that. You can take it whatever mm. way you want, depending which company you hate more. So um, <laughs> what do you gentlemen think? I guess companies cannot play nice. I don't know, but uh, so what they're going to get like 150 thousand. I mean that's still not that's I mean that's still not you know it's still an amount you could sneeze at but uh, I mean compared to one billion I guess well, they're kind of just wondering how much. One hundred and fifty that's like what's about you two or three gallons of gas now nowadays yeah but uh, reminds you of that little story about the little orphan that wanted more yes <laughs> but you know what the European government as that article you know they're the only ones that that you know seem to make sense of this, you know, in the fact that really software shouldn't be patentable, period. And I mean, that's a huge flaw in the system. We're seeing all kinds of these patent lawsuits going on like crazy. And uh, yeah. the thing is, we're starting to see some birth pains happening. Something is going to happen with the patent system. It is mm. going to collapse where software is concerned. That's my prediction. I don't know how you guys see it. But I, I'm starting to think that maybe, you know, these little patent disputes are eventually, you know. Well, yeah. the system. Going to have its way. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the system, the patent verification system, or just the system seems broken. It's overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. I don't, you would think, here we are, 2012, you know, you, you think something could have evolved, you know, as in intelligence. You know, brains, lawyers, whatever you want to call it, they could have evolved to make this a bit more simplified for the benefit of everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, time will tell, Spatry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah well, I guess, I mean, when it comes down to it, they're really just using a, a, you know, a patent application system that was, you know, built probably hundreds of years ago uh, for, you know, physical inventions and what have you. Yes. And now they're trying to apply it to, you know, application programming interfaces, which, you know, people just use to build stuff that they'll end up patenting. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they, they, yeah, it's it, it yeah. doesn't even make any logical sense to, to try and copyright right. patent it because it's not something that it's not something that people can do anything with unless they're going to try and build a, pro, uh, a product that they can then patent uh, on top of that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's it's yeah. an old busted system. Let's hope it gets uh, it gets revised sooner or later. Now yeah. that now that is nonsense. That's the patent system. That's real nonsense. But uh, I got. Oh, but wait a second. Wait a second. If the patent system did go away overnight, Mm -hmm. then half of the companies like Apple, Google, and all that, their their entire legal company, they'd have to like halve them because, and and, you know, no, and lawyers aren't going to like that. So I'd say it's probably going to hang around as long as, um, uh, as long as there is money to be made. Which yeah, let's face it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to go away, but maybe some kind of, of fine-tuning, modification. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I don't know. It's it's just not efficient, not at all. Especially with if we the, have any lawyers yeah. in the audience, definitely leave your professional opinion in the comments. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Definitely. Spatry, go ahead. What do you have? Microsoft's back to their old tricks uh, again. Another That's Microsoft right. bashing. You know, I'm leaving. Bye. No, just kidding. Yes. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. IG and I will talk about this one then, since. Uh, but okay. um, you, you, we all know very well that you know uh, the U.S. government said Microsoft, you're bad boy. You know, um, you can't be blocking other people from being able to put their software on your product. But guess what? They're back to the same old slitness mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Microsoft is a known abuser of its monopolistic position, which tries to kill competition by various means. Looking at the declining market share of Internet Explorer, uh-huh. Microsoft I wonder why that is planning yeah. to block competitors such as Firefox and Chrome. From its RT edition of Windows 8, Microsoft calls the ARM version of Windows 8 as RT. Uh Now, of course, we have discussed this before. Yes, yes. My poor little Microsoft doesn't consider tablets to be computers. So they're going to use this little ploy. So, in other words, if you're going to buy a tablet and you want to run Firefox, guess what? Or stable. <laughs> Are you familiar with the movie Men in Black, gentlemen? See, with Spatry... Indeed because, I am. Okay, see, with Spatry, what's going to happen, because he's he's bashing Big big Blue, Big Microsoft, he's going to have three men come out the door, Men in Blue, and then take him <laughs> away. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Where does Spatry go? Duh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they have... You know, they have this really oh, nice know, Fred, uh, jacket think? and a muzzle to go with it, you know, and, yes. uh, you know, and, and some, you know, um, and some, you know, you know, little probes to give me just the right amount of electrical mm-hmm. shock wirelessly, you know. Right. That's oh, right. but then, battery, it's fine, because then you can sue Microsoft for a million dollars for, um, what do they call it, anti-competitive, um, anti-competitive uh, practices, uh, nature yeah. or something. Yeah, and then with the money, I, you know, I can share the wealth amongst the uh, Linux community here, and we can make Linux even better. How so. ironic that would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be that's, like the best thing that ever happened. That's that's almost as funny <laughs> as 20% of Mac computers being infected with Windows viruses. That that's, <laughs> that still gets to me. I don't know how, how that happens. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. well, well yeah. the thing is, you know, you know uh, Mac is... Uh, uh, ha- has a higher popular popularity ratio than um, than um, Linux does, obviously. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, hackers want a piece of the pie. You know, they want to be able to, you know, get the credit card numbers from the Mac users as well. Mm. And since all of us <clears throat> Linux users are cheapskates, you know, they're never going to buy. You know? <laughs> Well, they'll they'll say Linux Minix, leave them alone. They don't have anything. Right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. and I mean, and I take that back. We're not, you know, I, you know, I'm thrifty, not cheap, but you know. <laughs> we are, we are, we are. I'm not going to throw my money at the latest um, Mac release. We are value conscious. Exactly. exactly. Okay. We, 
we always bring our little handheld, uh, our handheld yeah. computers. <clears throat> You know, our Androids are little handheld computers because that's what they are. Oh. And every time we go shopping for peripherals, we're on right. a website at, while we're in the store aisle. Barcode it. Yeah. It's part number XZ44. Uh, is that compatible? Oh, so I'm not the ah, only one that does that. I'll take it. <laughs> you know? Oh, so. no, that's the new rage is like barcoding everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have – I like to search for the unusual news, as Spatchy may have uh, heard by now. Anyway, I came across <laughs> – here we go. Uh-oh. Uh, apparently, a young tattoo art artiste really loves his Nano, his iPod, his Apple Nano, right? He, oh. <laughs> he liked it so much that he had apparently – he had magnets, little magnets implanted underneath his skin. So he wears his nano on his wrist because it sticks to his skin through the magnets. Uh. Oh. Now, yeah, and I'm like, well, I guess that's possible, but my thing is... <laughs> Airport <laughs> security. Here we go, here we go, yeah. How could he fly on planes? But that's not the funny part. Spatrick could probably guess where I'm going with this. Well, but, uh, probably around the house, you know, with uh, doors closed and everything, and he's got his arms full, he can hang it off as Prince Albert. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I was thinking, like, what if those magnets shift? <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> I mean, let's say they're hanging on his uh, left cheek or something, you know. So, you know, or on his belly button is. <laughs> uh, I think that's all that needs to be said about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, tell me about that. You you said there was something about a printer. Well, I have a dilemma. Uh, <laughs> I printed out 20 pages of something, and my ink ran out. And should, okay, so here's my here's my dilemma. Uh -huh. We've got to know what these 20 pages are. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty dollars for ink, or fifty dollars for a printer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I used to do? Um, this was like 10 years ago. It was actually cheaper to buy the printer than it was to buy the ink. So I'd just go out and buy a new printer. Uh -huh. This is when I was running Windows, obviously, and uh, I would be shopping at one of these cheap department stores anyway. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I'd go out and buy a Lexmark printer, and then um, I would use it, and then as soon as it ran out of ink, I'd go to the store and buy the same exact model. I had the drivers installed and everything, and then I'd just go and buy a new printer and then give the old printer to a friend. They're they're all happy because they think they're getting something cool. Right. And, uh but, yeah, there was one time I had, like, four or five printers stacked up in my room. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a Lego set. Yeah, right. Yeah. You should have gotten, gotten, like, a loyalty card from that department store. You know, oh, like, really? uh, buy five and get one free. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, so the, uh, it's funny because I was talking, you know, uh, I can remember a few years ago I used to uh, work in a welding factory. And I was talking to one of the guys and I was like, yeah. Every time I need more ink, I just go out and buy a new printer. It's cheaper. And they're looking at me like, I just check it out. Check out the prices. <laughs> well, it's, that's value conscious. There you go. <laughs> exactly. You know. What else but, do we have? Yeah. <laughs> but not very good for the environment. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, there was some know. more. There was some more. Uh, uh, speaking of companies, we, you know, we were talking about big companies. There was some more Sony news this morning on the radio. I guess they are still leaking, leaking. They are still bleeding money or losing money. Oh. And how can we, you know, what? How can we save Sony? Sony's been around a long time, a respected big electronics company known for some fine products oh, of the past. Oh no! How, how do ahead. we? Well. <laughs> they need they need a killer wow product, right? And I have an idea, guys. They should come out with his and hers smartphones. For him, simple and pragmatic. A combination cell phone, maybe electric <laughs> shaver, cordless shaver, right? See, now that's a winner. Okay, and for her, maybe a combination phone and something to do... Ow. Hey, I got the prototype. It works Ow. quite well, actually. Ow. Ow, my finger. <laughs> you really need to stop rubbing your, because it's too loud. But, but, 
<laughs> for 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 her, God, that still hurts. Battery, thanks. Um, for her, uh, it has to be a combination, something that's romantic. And let me just say that it's it's. <laughs> Shut up, shut up. It has to be. I'll give you guys a hint. It's it's a combination smartphone slash something that has to do with the built-in vibrating function. <laughs> and that, if you guys want to chime in on that. Now, before you guys laugh, okay. Um, well, or, I, 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 should I bring up the probe in question? Let no. me just. Let me <laughs> let me let me fill in a little bit of history, uh, because I know it sounds a bit. Will you stop it already? <laughs> I did a history. I I did a, a search the history of the vibrator. Just you know, just and apparently this dates back to Cleopatra, <laughs> the Egyptian you know queen and Mark Anthony and the Roman. Okay, well. Apparently, she tried to invent, of course, we're talking thousands of years ago, she invented the first vibrator. You want to know how? She took <laughs> something called a, a gourd, which is like a hollow piece of pottery, uh -huh. I, I think, and apparently, legend goes that she filled it with angry bees. <laughs> okay. And then the buzzing and the vibrate. well, that's, that's what I read. Apparently, that's history. So... Well, luckily she didn't make it out of wood because the splinters, ugh, I don't know. That would have been a problem. <laughs> but I still think to save Sony, his and hers, smartphone, and we can just leave it at that. Well, you know, they do have that watch we were talking about. The, the uh, know, smart watch. Yes, yeah, the smart watch. Some ideas watch. like that that land a company in the bin. Yeah, and... There is nothing smart about this watch. I mean, it's got such a small little screen on the thing. It only yeah. holds four icons and that sort of thing. Yeah. And somebody like me that can't even, you know, i got to have my glasses and that sort of thing. And then how do you answer the thing, you know? Um, well, who needs, who, needs, who needs Sony smartwatches when you can just get magnets implanted in your wrist and stick your iPod <laughs> Nano to it? <laughs> There, there are so you. You needed a magnet watch. That's what we've been missing all along. I mean. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if they eventually have a. You know, Google has these glasses. These this prototype coming out. Uh, a friend of mine who works for Google sent me a link to it, and uh, I don't remember where the site is, but they actually have these glasses now that's a HUD. It's a heads-up display. You wear these glasses, and the, it gives you, you know, and they don't even re really, well, they kind of look like glasses, but they don't, but yeah. But the, it gives you a heads-up display along yeah. the time as you, and I mean, they're GPS and everything, so as you turn your head, you know, and let's say you're walking down uh, downtown New York or something like that, gives you information about you know, GPS, how to walk from here to here to get to your appointment and that sort of thing, right. you know, and it's got, now that is some, now I imagine that would be some pretty hot technology smartwatch. It's unique as far as, I mean, if, if the smartwatch is an actual like working cell phone where you wear it and you had never, never have a chance of misplacing it or losing it or falling out of your pocket, I could see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You, you, actually, I think the smartwatch is a good idea, but the thing is, um, you know, they should have they should have some different choices in terms of the size right. of the faces on it and that yes. sort of thing. Yes. Maybe able to, you know, because you know, obviously, uh, I got to, you know, well, yeah, I, I got to wear glasses now and that sort of thing. It really wouldn't be practical for me, but yeah. And then you have a Bluetooth in your ear that that would work out nicely, actually. I wish Sony well. I mean, I remember buying yeah. their products as a kid way back when, back in New York, and they were, well, I guess they still are a cool company, but they just, you know, Sony is, with all that, with all those brains and all that money, you would think they would have came out with their own version of an iPod killer way back when or a tablet, but it, but it seems like Apple is so far ahead of the curve and everybody else is duh, but that's what it well, comes down to. No, what it I mean, really you, comes yeah. down is, to is this. Yeah, it's all of these patents that are out there, and it's 
hampering innovation. Okay, companies are afraid to make uh, devices that offer technologies in a compact form to give out to other people because obviously they're going to be trampling over somebody else's patent. You know, um, yeah, that's true. Think about that's that. True. You it know, so be. if we get rid of patents altogether, we'll be able to see a whole boom in um, innovation, new technologies being brought to the consumer at an affordable value, and yeah, it's very we can get a good quality product. You know, mm. if because then you know they can pass the savings on to the end consumer because they're not shelling out billions of, you know they're not shelling out 40 or 50 bucks per piece of hardware you know for everything they to make to defend it in a court of law exactly and yeah. this and these products you know cost them what 2 or 3 dollars a piece to make and you're paying 2 to 300 dollars for it well it's, Here's the thing. I mean, yeah. Sony, uh, in Sony's heyday, you know, they were the ones making like the DVD players, the the CD players, yes. the um, VCR yes. players, the all the professional like video camera yes. gear that right, when right. Uh, video cameras ran on tape and yeah. all that stuff. Since the digital age, I mean, uh, you know, Sony really hasn't come out with anything spectacular. I mean, they've had they've they've tried with smartphones and they haven't really done that well at all. No. They've tried with tablets and they've done even worse. And you know they're they're still kind of around in the TV realm, but I mean Samsung and Panasonic and those and yes. those companies are all over the TVs with their smart TVs and all that. Yes. So I mean, for for a company that used to make a killing out of home entertainment and you know professional um, professional recording gear, yes. they're kind of being left behind. And I think you know that's that's where they're going to be bleeding. Well, um, it's it's not for lack of trying. The, you you guys remember the Microsoft Zoom player? Yeah. yeah. I still have it. I have the first generation. Very, very reliable, easy to use. I thought at the time it was more user-friendly than the iPod. And at the time, that was supposed to be the iPod killer. Obviously, it didn't happen. Now, here's the thing. Anything that comes out that's supposed to be the Apple killer, whatever, the iPad, the iPod, you know, the iPhone. If the product is not either unique or wow factor or both, it's not going to happen. The Zoom is a perfect example. It came out, okay, and I was playing with it. Well, okay, this is supposedly the iPod killer. Well, it has a sealed battery like the iPod. It uses proprietary software like the iPod. And I'm like, the, 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 the. here was the most dumbest thing of all that Mike, here it comes, Patrick. I bought a used one because I didn't want to spend 300 bucks, but I spent 100 bucks. Now, the Zoom is a basically a Microsoft media player, yes? Uh-huh. Right? Now, yep. in their brilliant way of thinking, they created a Zune, a reliable Microsoft Media Player product that did not, that did not was unable to sync with the Microsoft Media Player software. You had to use the <laughs> yeah. Zune. What the frack was that? Had to be of all the brain dead dumbest. And it's like, wait a minute, it's a Microsoft Media Player that doesn't sync with Media Player. Duh. Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and sell it. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, Zune, I think, was almost a separate entity that was just kind of bolted onto Microsoft in that uh, Windows Media Player was a, was a piece of busted garbage anyway. So they wanted to make something <laughs> cool and slick like, um, you know, like uh, like iTunes. Well, so, uh, yeah, I was not I mean, given a choice. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I that mean, was... I've never even seen the Microsoft Zune in the flesh because it just wasn't big enough um, for it to be in normal stores. So, mm. yeah, there, there you go. Well, Microsoft uh, Zoom, smash your trash today on Sunday Night News and Nonsense. Well, I have it. It works great. Um, but at the time, I think Microsoft dropped the ball because if it did sync with Windows, you know, with the millions of Windows PCs, if it did have a user replaceable battery, if it did have a built-in <laughs> shaver, if it had something that was unique, then it possibly could have competed, but it had nothing. In fact, it was one of the dumbest hardware releases in history. Almost as bad as Vista, but the Zooms oh, are still exactly around. That's exactly what I was about to say. 
Yeah, uh, but the Vista. Hey, well, yeah, but yeah. Did it come preloaded with the worst music video of all time? VH1 rated uh, Rico Suave. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. Oh my god! No, no, it, it, Rico. It had the other video. I'm too sexy for my Zoom. To stop. <laughs> uh, RG, what else do you have? Anything? <laughs> No, not really. I mean, apart from, uh, yeah, apart from, uh, you know, just jumping back on the Microsoft hate bandwagon with, uh, you know, with the anti-popularity of Windows 8. And, uh, oh, wow, there we go. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we were talking, we just threw in, a, threw in a punch at Vista. I wonder how many punches are going to be thrown uh, at Windows 8 uh, as, a, as a next Vista. I don't think Windows 8 is going to be that bad. And, and I think Windows 8 is probably going to surprise everybody for the good. That's my prediction. So we'll see what happens. But they need to bring... I think the, it'll be good, but people will find it difficult. That's my guess. It may not be as big a splash as Windows 7 because Windows 7 was brilliant from the start. It, it was everything Vista should well, have been. Well, it had to be. Otherwise, right. the company was Well, yes. let me explain that the Windows RT that yeah. I was discussing, yeah. it will have two environments. It will have a Windows Classic environment and it will have the Metro environment for apps. So apparently Microsoft has been listening to uh, all of the it makes uh, sense. that everybody has been making and they're figuring, uh-oh, we better offer the Classic interface for this because otherwise yeah people yeah people aren't even going to touch this with a 10 foot pole we're not even going to be able to give this away be a yeah. user friendly company it's that folks corporate yeah. guys CEOs it's not that freaking complicated so listen to uh, your users yes and that's what they that's what they bragged about when they released windows 7 you know we've listened and we've made it so much better and they did they delivered they did um, yeah. yeah and but, uh, but so now, you know for uh, I mean, for Windows 8, that's that's all they have to do, really. And like like you were saying, uh, Toss today in your videos, you know, if they just bring back that start button, uh, make a few other tweaks here and there, it it'd be you know people would be perfectly happy running it. It's it would be brilliant because unlike say Ubuntu, where you have to log in and out to change, you know, from going from say Unity to Cinnamon. With Windows 8, you just hit the super key and you can change your environments. It's brilliant. It's easy, but you need the start button as an option. It's that simple. And apparently they're going to do it, which if they do it and it's and it's not buggy, I think Windows 8 will be fine. So If they do it and it's not buggy, we will not hamper Microsoft for a whole week, do you think? <laughs> oh. um, Total OS today, you said you think it will be fine. Do you know what fine means? Uh, stable. <laughs> what? Freaking, freaking insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Uh, on that note, do we have anything else? <laughs> Can I go? I'm out. Oh. I did come across something that's not really tech news, but this this is, this is kind of funny oh. on, on, on a personal level. One of the all-time greatest movies ever made, The Godfather. Right. Oh yes. There apparently the estate of the guff or the son of the writer is being sued by the film company because apparently they released another sequel book. I haven't read it without the permission of the film company. Ooh. And and this uh -oh. shows. Yeah, I'm like wow. And this really shows a lot of disrespect to the family. And I think the problem was huh. that the film company couldn't make an offer that they could have refused. But a book book. Well, you know what I think they should do to solve this issue? Yeah. Uh, they need to put the, the head of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Will said. That what, as long as he doesn't see the horse's head, he's fine, right? Yeah. Exactly. We'll put the head of the horse uh, in the filmmaker's bedroom. <laughs> talk about talk about the horse stable for real, yeah. <laughs> hey, and we can put some of the uh, excrement with the head in the bed. <laughs> You try to send a oh, real good. message. Uh, <laughs> folks, I think we've gone over our allotted 15 minutes uh, for this uh, Sinner <laughs> report. Uh, Spatry, that was really a crappy comment, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get back to him. I, I, I had to get back because last week I did my dinosaur report. He says uh, he says to me, but that was really a crappy story, so I had to get back <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, paybacks or Metavex. Metavex? Okay. Well, folks, on that note, thank you for listening <laughs> to this somewhat um, bizarre Sinner report with my good friends Spatchery and, of course, Infinitely Galactic from Australia. Next one we do, you, you need to tell us some funny stories out of Australia that have to do with technology or maybe some personal bloopers for the next one or something like that. It might be funny. So. I, I shall try, yeah. Sounds yeah. good. Spatchery, anything I, else? I'll yeah. Have out, I'll have to pull out my uh, truly tasteless joke book. No. <laughs> you haven't had that open already? <laughs> New and listen to Spatry. I I like to keep this a family show. I monitor all comments. Sure he does. I do. I do monitor all comments. Oh, you do, I but do. you don't right. care. I haven't yeah. said it. Yeah. I haven't. Hey, I haven't issued any profanity tonight or at, during any episode. Although I have, you know, you know, it's just one. It's just one of them things. I learned how to be vulgar without having to use profanity. <laughs> following show recommends parental guidance for audiences under the age of 15. It contains mild adult references. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>